Hello, I'm Holly, ESG Specialist, and I'm joined today with Marcus, Investment Analyst at Mirai Asset. It's great to have you here to give us a review of the wind power sector in Asia Pacific. So since the middle of this year, this sector has gained a lot of investor attention and there's been some strong industry progress. Um, so what's been happening? There are two key changes that are happening this year. First, we see a global interest to look for opportunities and sectors that are beneficiaries under the Carbon Neutral Initiative. And they found wind power plays an important role in the global renewable energy mix, similar to solar power, which are critical for Asian countries when they are lowering their dependency on fossil fuels. Second, we see a stronger than expected wind farm project procurement in China. This comes as a surprise because 2020 was the year the Chinese government ends the subsidy to onshore wind farm project. But in 2021, without the subsidy, we still see a very large demand for building and running wind farm project in China. Yes, we did see very strong wind power procurement in China year to date. 41 gigawatts was recorded in China for the first three quarters in 2021, which was the second highest in history, much higher than the 17 gigawatts for the same period last year. So what's driving such strong demand? In the past decade, we see wind power sector has been heavily dependent on the government subsidy and government policy. And hence, there is a limited incentive for the whole supply chain to optimize the efficiency and also cost structure. So only after 2020, we started to see a concerted effort of the whole supply chain to focus on efficiency and make wind power more attractive and also more cost competitive than the other energy sources, which is now where we are, we are finally seeing great parity of wind power projects in China, which is through building larger wind turbines from traditionally three to four megawatts to now four to six megawatts per turbine, and also through better resources and material optimizations. It's good to hear that we've reached grid parity um, for wind power in China and that from the supply side, there's still interest despite the winding down of government subsidies. What about the demand side? On the demand side, we see a very strong interest for power utilities companies basically directing all of their spending towards renewables primarily solar and wind. And this is an impressive commitment for these companies, which improve the ESG appeal, and also it's consistent to the overall China intention to lower the carbon emissions and also achieve carbon neutral by 2060. Absolutely, the transition from fossil fuels to renewables is a very important part of the E and the ESG when it comes to decarbonizing global economies. I think particularly um, from Paris Agreement in 2015 when countries made carbon reduction targets and worked towards peaking carbon emissions by 2030. Right. I noticed the COP26 meeting just ended in the middle of November this year. What's your takeaways and also the implications to renewables? Well, some countries like India and Brazil, they um, publish new targets that are more ambitious. Other countries like China, they publish more concrete plans for how they'd go about peaking carbon emissions. For example, from China, new industry targets were announced which included non-fossil energy consumption to exceed 80% by 2060, which would mean renewables could account for 95% of China's power supply by 2045. So clean electrification is really important for national decarbonisation plans. So for solar um, in China, China already has the largest solar power capacity. What about wind power? Um, how would China be more involved in the global wind market and how could China position itself in the global supply chain? We definitely see opportunities for wind power sectors in China to play a more important role globally. For wind turbines and wind components, we think the companies in China have strong production know-how, a long operating history and also pretty good product scale that are, enables them to produce high quality and cost competitive wind turbine component products that can be exported to other countries. But for wind turbine OEMs and installations, there are already dominant players globally such as Siemens, GE and Vestas. It is difficult for Chinese players to win a meaningful shares globally because it requires a strong know-how on domestic logistics, supply chain management and also the ability to win projects globally. What are the key risks and market concerns for this wind power growth? I think the key 
risk of the sector is still around margins. On one hand, most of the players in the supply chain want to make wind power more attractive, so they want to bring down the wind power prices relative to the other energy sources. On the other hand, we see inflationary pressure from raw materials, from shipping, and also from labor. So it would be a challenging task for the wind players in China to, and also in Asia Pacific, to be able to keep a stable and good operating margins going forward. Understand. Thank you very much for your insightful sharing, Marcus. It's interesting to hear the drivers behind the strong demand for wind power, not only driven by low carbon policies and government subsidies, but also wind power reaching grid parity in China. And it's also interesting to hear about China's position within the global supply chain, um, considering the industry landscape and the strengths and expertise of Chinese manufacturers. Thank you again, and we look forward to sharing more insights in future videos. Thank you.